Many have said, well, I'm not going to go out and preach the gospel. That offends people. I'm going to go out and live the gospel. The idea is somehow my life is just going to reflect the gospel because they're going to look at it and they're going to see the reflection of my life and that's going to change them. Well, Paul says again here, the phrase, how are they going to believe in whom they have not heard? There is a, in God's design, he has designed it to go out and proclaim the message of truth. To proclaim verbally, to proclaim out loud the message of God. Nobody comes to belief without hearing the message of truth. I remember a time that we were tested on this in our ministry life. Many of you who've been around here a long time may have remember this particular story. When we were at our location up in Osprey and had set up uh, you know, the facilities and got it all ready, the first week of our opening, or within the first couple of weeks of our opening, an individual came and said, we want to use the church here for a soup kitchen. We have food, we have clothing, we, could, we can get these resources, and we'll have them here, and people will come in, and we can give these resources away to people and help them out. And I asked him, okay, that's great, we can fulfill that need. When can we minister to them spiritually? When can we preach the gospel to them? And the answer is, well, we can't. Because it's given to us, these things are given to us by the government and given to us by other sources that we can't preach the gospel to them. And then I asked, why would we do that? To which I will never forget the words of this individual when he said, well, Francis Assisi said, preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. And I know for some that sounds deeply profound. Ah, yes, this is so Profound. Yeah, we'll, we'll just live it out and they're going to just see our love. And then seeing our love, they're just going to believe because they see our great generosity. Though, of course, I'd say what would make us any different than the Red Cross at that point or any different than any other charity out there. But I responded to that person with Romans ten seventeen. While Francis Assisi may have said that, the Apostle Paul said this, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. Here in Romans chapter 10 and verse 14, how will they believe in whom they have not heard? The message has to be proclaimed. They must hear it. They must hear the message of truth. The impression you have didn't save you. If you were walking down the street, you felt bad one day, and said, ah, oh, this is going to change my life. You weren't changed by an impression you weren't changed by that great art hanging on the wall. You saw that art of Jesus. You said, oh, there must be a Savior. Look, I see his picture there on the wall. That saved you. No, the artwork didn't save you. You didn't look at great architecture and say, oh, this is great design. There must be a designer. Okay, God, save me. You weren't saved by that picture, that impression, that great design. You weren't even saved by that near-death experience that you had. When you were in a car accident and should have died, and at that moment God got your attention, you decided, ah, this saved me. No, you didn't get saved that way. You didn't get saved by some cloud in the sky in which you looked at and saw and said, that's Jesus speaking to me. You didn't get saved by anything other than hearing the message of truth and believing it. You heard the gospel. You understood God's revelation. Now, just a little side note here. You might say, well, can somebody not read their Bible and come to salvation? I'm not saying you couldn't read your Bible and not come to it. Remember the setting here in Romans chapter 10. The setting in Romans and at this time is in a time where there wasn't public uh, or easy access to paper. There wasn't easy access to books and materials. So we're not saying somebody couldn't open up a Bible and read their Bibles uh, it's in this period of time, primary communication was oral. People spoke to one another. And it's in that setting that Paul is saying the gospel message objectively proclaimed, clearly in this setting, orally in our setting, whether written or orally, communicates the message of God. We must hear God's message to believe. What about those impressions? What about those experiences? 
What about that near-death experience? What about that conviction of your heart when you looked at that artwork? What about the conviction and impression on your heart when you looked in the sky, when you saw those things? Those are the means in which God was drawing you, but that was not the source to save you. Yes, God providentially works in all of our lives differently, drawing us, but it is upon hearing of the gospel, hearing the objective message of our sin, the holiness of God, and believing upon Christ that we were saved.